Tony D and Little Joan with a screenwriter's rant on three different trailers for three different projects I feel are very self-important. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Horror in South Jersey. It's the Pineys. Books 1 through 13, available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. Don't forget, Piney's 14, coming out very soon. All right. American Rust is the first one, Broken Justice. This is the second season of a D Jeff Daniels show. Uh, the Count of Monte Cristo, uh, French version of the uh, Alexander Dumas uh, book. And Ripley. I think it's based on the talented Mr. Ripley uh, that was formerly played by Matt Damon, and this is going to be the guy from Sherlock who played Moriarty. All right, so I feel like all three of these tra trailers are extremely self-important. Jeff Daniels is at the top of that list, I think, because he loves to play these dramatic roles, even though he was in Dumb and Dumber, which was such a fun role for him. Um, he plays these dramatic roles like way too hard in my view like he just loves to drip in the dialogue about how terrible america is uh to some extent uh he just loves it so this one's about a corrupt police chief in a rust belt city and here i don't know uh, i think he blows up a guy he doesn't like i'm not sure why he doesn't like him but he's reinstated as a cop after the events of the previous episode, this actress, I forget her name, but she's in it too. And uh, it's just about how corrupt he is. And, you know, there's going to be an election and then there, someone's going to go after him. But meanwhile, he's solving murders, but he's very unorthodox. And for some reason, they just threw in a gay romance. I, I don't know why. Doesn't seem to have anything to do with the main storyline, but sure, whatever. And then guys are like, I can protect you. I don't need your protection. I'm, a, I'm the police chief, whatever. So it's about, I think, a corrupt guy. And I think I looked at the first season trailer. I kind of had the same reaction if I'm remembering. March 28th, it's on Prime. I guess he's opening a bar there called Snarly. I, I don't know. It, it, again... Yeah, that's her again. That's a better shot of her. And I don't say that because her boobs are out. Maura Tur Turney. She was in news radio with... Uh, what's his face? Uh, the guy from Kids in the Hall. She used to do funny stuff too. It like kind of... Look, I don't want actors to be typecast, but when they go into drama and then they do something that's so dripping with drama, it kind of turns me off. It's like a little too hard. It's like a little too much drama. Like everything's disintegrating around them. Which I guess with some actors I'd be okay with. But with these two, with the guy from Dumber and Dumber and the girl from News Radio, I'm kind of like, eh, kind of can't take you that all that seriously. Maybe lighten the show up a little bit. I don't know. I just don't feel the stakes are... I feel like the stakes are almost like everything's turned up to 11, you know? And Jeff Daniels, I just don't buy him as a hunter at all because he, to me, he's like too visible as a activist. And because of that, I don't buy him in this role at all. I feel like he took the role like, yeah, we're going to stick it to those gun nuts. I'm going to show them how corrupt and stupid they are. Like, I don't, I don't. it's like your politics come out of your pores. And then it bleeds onto the screen for me. Maybe I just know too much. I mean, for your average normie, don't really follow this. Probably wouldn't bother them, but... Uh, so, let's read the write-up. Compelling family drama that explores the tattered American dream. You see what I mean? Through the eyes of a complicated and compromised chief of police, Del Harris, in a Rust Belt town in southwest Pennsylvania. It's like... Could you add any other adjectives to tear down America in that? It's too much. It's too much. Like, give us some hope in the damn pitch. Anyhow, the next one is The Count of Monte Cristo. This is a classic story. Uh, if you don't know what happens, basically, 
A uh, guy gets screwed over, sentenced to like a prison island. He eventually, I think he escapes and then comes back to get his revenge. He's either, he either escapes or they let him go, I forget. By that time, his wife is remarried. Uh, everybody's moved on, but he's going to get his revenge and he kind of takes it too far. So it's a, it's a classic story about, you know, taking vengeance too far. And uh, it's done by the French, so this will probably be spot on. This will probably be spot on. It's a movie. It's not, it's not a TV series, as near as I can tell. So this feels very authentic, I'll say. I like the look of it. I'm not so sure about this. I mean, it's like the 1700s. You think he could make that mask? Maybe, I guess. Maybe with enough clay and paint, but I don't know, man. So, uh, The Count of Monte Cristo, a film by Mathieu de la Porte and Alexandre de la Pierre. I don't know if I said that right, but it sounded French. Coming soon. Uh, this movie's so new, it's like, I, I went to go look it up and I was having trouble finding it. Um, so, looks, you know, it's classic. Now, how is it too self-important? Well, it's just naturally that way. It's the, it's a classic, and it's very intense. But it kind of works for the frogs. Um, I don't think it's so intense that it turns people off. I mean, it's subtitled, which is a bit of an issue. But since it's a classic story, you're probably already familiar with most of it. So, like, that's okay. I mean, if you, if you don't know the story, The Simpsons did it once. <laughs> so, with Homer as the guy who comes back and gets his revenge against Mo, who remarried Marge and uh, raised the kids, and they liked them. So, uh, and finally, Ripley, which is, uh, I think, the amazing Mr. Ripley, who's a con artist, and I think that's Florence Pugh. Who? Um... So Ripley's just ripping everybody off. It takes place in the early 60s in Italy. And uh, he's friends with this rich guy who has everything in the world, but he's bleeding him dry or bleeding him as much as he can. He's looking to take his place. And I think he kills him. I think he eventually kills him and takes his, takes his place. But uh, somebody's girlfriend is is the wiser. So... I mean, it looks pretty classic. You know, the black and white, I don't mind it. I kind of don't mind it. I kind of like the look of it. The execution, I think this is probably better than the, and the Matt Damon one. I didn't really buy because Matt Damon was, you know, I get what he was trying to do. But, like, again, his image didn't fit the role. Like, his image was a little too squeaky clean. And he kind of kind of went into it and there was also like a there's a bit of a gay vibe to it that like Ripley was gay for I think it was Jude Law who plays the guy he kills and rips off didn't work for me just just didn't work it just looked like a Matt Damon being told what to say Matt Damon in a play <laughs> like I didn't buy him as the character however the guy who used to play Moriarty on Sherlock April 4th by the way he's he can be pretty intense and he's already played a bad guy. Obviously, he was a bad guy in Sherlock. So it kind of looks cool. I could kind of see it. But again, it seems very self-important. I mean, to do this as a miniseries, I guess. It's a, it's a limited series on April 4th. He's a liar. It's his profession. Okay. I think it's called The Talented Mr. Ripley. That's the name of it. Again, a kind of a classic story. I don't know if you need a whole mini series for it. I think you probably could have done it in two hours. I forget the original work. I don't think it was a novel, was it? I think it was a short story. I forget. Uh, let's see. The talented Mr. Ripley. Uh, Directed, but based on P 
Patricia Highsmith's 1955 novel. Oh, okay. So it was a whole novel. So, how long was it, I wonder? 252 pages. Okay. So maybe it, maybe you could do it as a miniseries then. All right. There's probably a lot of detail there. Um, I'm buying it more in this black and white version than the Matt Damon one. Uh, I'll say that. Um, but a bit ostentatious, but classic. So I, maybe I could get behind it. All right. So, um, is it right up here? Yeah, that, no, we already read this. Um, I don't think there was a right up here. No. All right. So how would I rank these? Very self-important. Well, on the bottom, American Rust, obviously. I, I, you know, if he was doing a classic story, it might have helped him. Uh, Jeff Daniels. If he was less political, maybe. If he changed his look up. I mean, he basically looks like the guy from Dumb and Dumber with a hat on. Maybe change your look up. Maybe dye your hair. Do something different. I don't know. Same thing with uh, Morna Turney. She looks exactly the same as she did on news, news radio, just older and tired. The whole show just feels like a drain. Like, who would watch this? You know? That's a, that's the way I feel. It's like, American Rust. You want to watch American Rust? Get excited for that? Like, the whole show just drains your energy, I feel like. Even just watching the trailer, I'm like, ugh, the music, the everything about it, it's just, it's just draining. I don't know, people, some people like that, I guess. It's kind of the way I felt about Law & Order SVU after a while. The show just became a drag on my life. It was just a drag to watch it. There's nothing happy ever happened in a damn show. So, so I mean, maybe Ice-T would be in it once in a while and say something funny to Richard Belzer, but that was about it. So, like, I can't watch this. It's not that I even want to. or don't. I just can't watch a show like this anymore. So that would be on definitely on the bottom. Uh, after that, I think... Oh, shoot. <laughs> Going to Twitter by mistake. Uh, would be Ripley. I mean, it looks fine. I don't know if you need a miniseries. Maybe it do. Uh, I like the black and white. But again, you're kind of like... You kind of like push it. Oh, it's a very serious movie. Very serious movie. Shot in Italy in the early 60s. I mean, it's... I mean, it took place... It was written in 1955, the novel. So, okay. I'll give you it. And maybe it's good. But, I don't know. A miniseries, man? Seems like a lot. Seems like a lot. I, I suspect they drag it out. I don't know. I don't know how many episodes they're doing. Let's see. We have a... Uh, we have an episode list. I would say if this is more than, I don't know, six episodes, seems like a lot. Season one, come on. Eight episodes. I don't know. That seems like a lot, right? That seems like a lot to me. So because of that, yeah, I would put it at number two. I think it looks uh, possibly good, though. I would say that. I, I would say, you know, I, I worry that you would stretch it out. I mean, essentially, you're talking about an eight-hour movie. That's what it essentially is. When you're talking about a miniseries that's eight, eight episodes long, you're basically talking an eight-hour movie. And that sounds too long. That sounds like there's going to be some buffer in there somewhere. And I don't know, you know... Even if the, I mean, the novel's 252 pages, so do the math on that. Eight divided by that. Yeah, I don't, I think that's too many. I think you would, I think you should have came in at around four to six tops. Closer to four. I think that would have been the best. Four would have been, I, Hollywood, man, it's just, everything's too long these days. And finally, The Count of Monte Cristo. I would put this at the top, even though it's subtitled and it, it kind of, brings me out of it a little bit the french i think their self-importance in a story like this i think it works for them, right i think it actually works for the entire concept because first the count of monte cristo is an absolute classic i mean ripley thing it's kind of a classic but not like this this is like you know a really a real classic book you can't deny it and um so that sort of haughtiness kind of works for it. And they're French. 
So that kind of haughtiness, it totally works. I think it totally works. So being more self-important, uh, you know, yeah, you, you kind of almost want that in a, in a, in a movie like this. And it's a movie in two hours. I'm in and out in two hours. Classic story. There's no sense dragging it out. What are you going to, what are you going to tell me new in this? I don't think you're going to tell me anything. So yeah, I would put this one on the top. I might even watch this one. The other two, I don't know. Ripley is on Netflix. Maybe, but American Rust, no way. No way. I'm out. Anyhow, that's it for me, Tony D and Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble for our more base takes. If you can find a more base take, I say, take it. Uh, next up for me, I will be at the Addison at 2 p.m. on Wednesday. I forget what town that's in. I just added another date here today. Oh, that's in Egg Harbor. Uh, the Addison at Summer's Place at 2 p.m. Uh, that's on Wednesday for residents and family. Uh, and then on March 7th, Thursday, I will be at the Pemberton Community Library. That one's open to the public, 6 p.m. for my talk on how to hunt the Jersey Devil. And then I will be at Lines in the Pines, Lines on the Pines, at the Stockton College uh, on Saturday. But I will be leaving early, so make sure you get there early if you want to see me and get something signed. Um, so just giving you a heads up. I can't tell you why, but uh, uh, more info if you see me. That's it. We'll see you in the next one.